I'm Dr. Frida, and today we're going to talk about the truth behind high blood pressure. Top 21 most frequently asked questions answered. High blood pressure or hypertension is a leading cause of heart disease, strokes, kidney failure. Many people have hypertension, yet not many people know how to control it. So today, I'm going to give you the top 21 questions answered about high blood pressure. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frieda an MD who has been triple board certified in nephrology, which is the study of high blood pressure and kidneys, as well as internal medicine and pediatrics. And today we're going to talk about the truth behind high blood pressure. Top 21 most frequently asked questions answered. All right, let's get started. What is considered high blood pressure? First, let's talk about what normal blood pressure is. Normal blood pressure is when that top number or systolic blood pressure is less than 120, and that bottom number or diastolic blood pressure is less than 80. You have elevated blood pressure when that systolic blood pressure is between 120 and 129 and that diastolic is still less than 80. Here's what hypertension or high blood pressure actually is. You have stage one hypertension when that systolic blood pressure is between 130 and 139 or that diastolic blood pressure is between 80 and 89 and you have stage two hypertension when that systolic blood pressure is 140 or greater or that diastolic blood pressure is 90 or greater. Many people listening will say, oh no, uh, high blood pressure is normal for me. My blood pressure runs in the 150s over 90s and I'm fine, I feel good, that's normal for me. No, it's not. High blood pressure is high blood pressure. Be sure to consult your doctor. What is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So the systolic blood pressure is that top number on your blood pressure reading and the diastolic blood pressure is that bottom number of your blood pressure reading. And here's what it means. So first off, blood pressure refers to the force that blood exerts on your blood vessels, right? And so the systolic blood pressure is the pressure in your blood vessels when the heart is contracting or squeezing. The diastolic blood pressure is the pressure in your blood vessels while the heart is relaxed. Can dehydration cause high blood pressure? That's a very interesting question. Typically when we think of dehydration, which is when your body does not have enough fluid when you're not hydrated, dehydration initially will cause a low blood pressure or a hypotension. But if you have a long-standing dehydration, then your body can react in a certain way that actually can cause high blood pressure. What happens is if you have prolonged dehydration, then your body has a mechanism where it activates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. And what this does is it sets off a cascade that allows your body to hold on to sodium in the vessels. And when you hold on to sodium in the vessels, then the water follows and you end up with high blood pressure. So long-standing dehydration can cause a mechanism which actually leads to high blood pressure. The other thing is that when you're chronically dehydrated, that can cause renal failure. Even if you are acutely or quickly dehydrated, it can cause an acute kidney injury or a quick renal failure. If this happens and if it's prolonged especially, then you can get a prolonged kidney disease or chronic kidney disease. And of course, chronic kidney disease can lead to high blood pressure. And so, yes, there are mechanisms in which dehydration can ultimately lead to high blood pressure. I want to give you even more information on how to control high blood pressure. Be sure to download your copy of my book. It's called Under Pressure. This is your step-by-step -step guide to controlling high blood pressure. This book is packed with valuable tools, guidelines, and information to help you to control high blood pressure. Click the link in the description to get your copy today. Can high blood pressure cause headaches? Absolutely, yes. When you have hypertension, this can lead to an elevated pressure inside of your skull. It can specifically cause a high pressure within the blood vessels in your brain, which can cause a headache. And if this pressure is prolonged or if this pressure is very high, it can even cause a rupture in some of the blood vessels in the brain. You can also get a pounding in the ears, which can be associated with a type of a headache. Why is high blood pressure known as the silent killer? High blood pressure is known as the silent killer 
because the body is a very beautiful thing in that it will compensate. And when you have high blood pressure for a long period of time, or if you have a gradual onset of high blood pressure, you can ultimately feel no symptoms. What does that mean? That means that even with sky high blood pressures, a person can walk around and not even know that he or she or they even has the high blood pressure. Meanwhile, that hypertension is still doing damage to the heart, to the kidneys, to the brain. But the person with high blood pressure, if it's not checked, if you're not seeing your doctor regularly, you won't even know it. So the high blood pressure can be killing you, leading to heart disease, strokes, and kidney failure without you even knowing it. Silent killer. Does COVID cause high blood pressure? That's another interesting question because the answer is yes, it can. The infection with the SARS-CoV-2 virus or COVID-19 infection can lead to hypertension. You see, COVID can actually cause issues with the kidneys. It can be nephrotoxic and COVID-19 disease can cause blood clots in tiny vessels. If it causes blood clots in the tiny vessels in the kidney, that can lead to kidney failure, which can lead to hypertension. Can high blood pressure cause dizziness? Yes, again, the answer is yes. When you have hypertension, if it leads to an elevated pressure in the brain, then this can lead to dizziness, it can lead to confusion, it can even lead to weakness, especially if you have a stroke because of the hypertension. Does high blood pressure make you hot? High blood pressure directly does not tend to make you hot, but it can be associated with other factors or other disorders that can make you hot. And so sometimes that can be confusing. For example, if you have an elevated thyroid function or hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease, hyperthyroidism can cause you to be hot or have heat intolerance. Hyperthyroidism can also cause you to have hypertension. And so some people may associate the two together. Also, if you are a lady who is going through menopause, being a female of an older age does put you at risk for having hypertension. And so you may have hypertension during that time. At that same time, you may also notice that you're having hot flashes. And you may associate the two, hypertension and high blood pressure. However, high blood pressure typically does not in and of itself cause you to be hot. Another disorder that can sometimes be associated with being hot and linked to high blood pressure is anxiety or if you're having panic attacks. Many times people who are having panic attacks and sweating feel hot and with that stress of the anxiety disorder or the panic attack, they may also have hypertension. So you see, there are a lot of disorders that are associated with the hypertension, but really it's that underlying factor or disorder that's causing the person to be hot and they may falsely associate it with the hypertension in and of itself causing them to be hot. Can alcohol cause high blood pressure? Oh, I get this question a lot. And the answer is yes. An excessive alcohol intake can be associated with high blood pressure. And so there are some recommendations that you should limit your alcohol. And with those recommendations, they state that most women should have no more than one drink a day. Most men should have no more than two drinks a day. And for men over the age of 65, no more than one drink a day. Now, what is, what's the definition of a drink? When I say drink, I'm not talking about a 32 ounce tumbler filled with vodka or with bourbon or some other dark liquor. No, that's not a drink just because it's one container. It's not one drink. Drinks have very specific definitions. For example, five ounces or up to eight ounces of wine is considered one drink, depending upon the alcohol concentration. 12 ounces of beer is considered one drink. And if you're dealing with a stronger liquor, like an 80 proof alcohol, then 1.5 ounces is considered one drink. If you have more than the recommended amount of alcohol each day, then yes, you are putting yourself at risk for high blood pressure. Also, there was a time when red wine was considered to be helpful for heart disease and actually something where in some circles it was recommended. That recommendation is no longer here. We do not recommend that you have alcohol intake. If you do partake in alcohol, do it in moderation, and please have no more than one or two drinks a day. But be sure to consult your doctor. Can anemia cause high blood pressure? Typically, when we think about anemia, especially if it's an anemia that's due to blood loss, we think about that low blood pressure or hypotension. And if someone, for example, is in an accident where they're bleeding out or they have gunshot wounds where they're bleeding out, then that anemia will typically cause low blood pressure. 
However, the body does have a mechanism. If you are losing blood, then again, your body will try to activate a mechanism that will cause you to hold on to sodium and to have high blood pressure. But again, typically anemia is more associated with low blood pressure. Be sure to download your copy of my book. It's called Under Pressure. It's your step-by-step -step guide on how to control high blood pressure. This book is packed with valuable tools, guidelines, and information to help you to control high blood pressure. Click the link in the description to get your copy today. Does lack of sleep cause high blood pressure? Yes, lack of sleep or sleep deprivation definitely can cause high blood pressure. Now, most people need about seven hours of sleep a night or even nine hours of sleep a night. I'm talking uninterrupted restful sleep. This allows your body to rejuvenate. It allows your mind to rejuvenate. It allows your brain to rejuvenate. And when this happens, it helps you to decrease the stress and allows your cells to be ready for the next day. If you are a person who lacks sleep, it may lead to high stress. And if you have high stress, that can lead to high stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. When these hormones surge, these stress hormones, it can cause your blood vessels to constrict or to tighten. And if the blood vessels tighten, then the pressure against them is high. You get high blood pressure. So yes, lack of sleep can lead to high blood pressure. So go to bed. Remember, high blood pressure is the silent killer. And so you must consult with your physician. You must get your blood pressure checked. Just because you're walking around having no symptoms, feeling great, feeling footloose and fancy free, that does not mean that you do not have the diagnosis. Make sure you find out if you have hypertension, this silent killer, and so that you can get it controlled. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you can be among the first to know when I'm releasing new medical content. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram and all social media platforms at Dr.Frida. Meanwhile, do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.